When a new century was born in 1900, woman's place was in the home. Few sports and few jobs were considered ladylike enough for her attention. The amply padded and well-corseted young woman who strolled in New York's Easter Parade of 1903 was supposed to be a companion, not a competitor to man. The fashions of the infant century were daring compared to those of the century before. These aren't lady gangsters with submachine guns, but lady hunters in startling Paris hunting costumes, which probably scared away all the gang. For motoring, designers created the trouser skirt. Watch closely for a glimpse of a well-turned ankle. During the 1910s, Congress got its first woman representative. Her name was Jeanette Rankin. Mrs. Theodore Roosevelt, wife of the former president and a leader in the Girl Scout movement, posed for her only newsreel appearance. With Europe at war, Sarah Bernhardt toured America. Asking aid for France, the divine Sarah displayed the fire that made her the greatest actress of her day. Soon the U.S. entered the conflict, and overnight the American girl was transformed from Alice sit by the fire to Miss Casey Jones. As the men marched off to war, the women exchanged their flowing skirts for overalls and took over even the toughest jobs. We had lady lumberjacks. And lady steeplejacks. And lady sign painters. The nation would never be the same again and neither would its women. Donning uniforms, they pitched directly into the fight for democracy. New York cheered its head off when Red Cross and Army nurses, 25,000 strong, paraded down Fifth Avenue. General Pershing himself presented the Distinguished Service Medal to these nurses for heroism on the field of battle, and even took their picture. Women's fashions reflected her new independence. Bare-armed, bare-kneed bathing suits appeared on the beaches. Well, most beaches. The glamour girl of the 1910s captured male hearts with dazzling creations such as this. Furs were really furs. The little wraparound number is of ermine with trimmings of mole. Here's a cape and muff of Russian sable. This tending tonight model is of chinchilla. It cost $6,500 and was cheap at the price. The battle of the suffragettes raged on two continents. In London, Bobby's carted the fabulous Mrs. Pankhurst off to jail, but she kept on demonstrating for women's right to vote. In America, the suffragettes carrying parasols marched on the U.S. Capitol. Lillian Russell, a living legend as the belle of the gay 90s, now in middle age, lent her support. And women got the vote after a long fight against prejudice and ridicule. The ladies had a right to celebrate. Dances across the nation reflected the final bursting of bonds loosened during World War I. Once it had been a waltz, now it was the shimmy. By the 1920s, women were more than ever earning their way in jobs formerly reserved for men. New York even got lady policemen, a formidable force which, though its main job was directing traffic, could doubtless make any criminal blanch. There was a new breed abroad in the land, the woman aerial daredevil. Her motto seemed to be, anything a man can do, I can do better. The dauntless little lady is Mabel Cody. Gladys Ingle used shackled ankles and a hook for her hair-raising transfers from plane to plane. Most amazing of all was 10-year-old Mildred Unger, who got right into the spirit of the Roaring Twenties by doing the Charleston 2,000 feet up. A few years earlier, no woman would think of changing a tire. Now, Gladys Ingle did it the hard way, carrying a whole wheel aloft. Imagine transferring planes while hanging onto a heavy wheel. Gladys proceeds with the job. You'd expect a Lady Hercules, but despite the grease stains, she still managed to look frail, feminine, and even coy. Fashions were more daring than ever. Stockings for bathing on their way out in 1922 were soon to go the way of the bustle. 
Grandpa, still ogling the ladies, had less to look at, for the flapper had traded curves for that boyish figure. But she still got a kick out of a loving cup. As for street fashions, the world had never before seen anything like them. Short skirts and misplaced waistlines would have become symbols of a rip-roaring age of flaming youth, prohibition, and Coolidge prosperity. Posed on a roof, the contest winner could show her boyish bob. Gambling ships anchored just outside the three-mile limit found that women were among their best customers. They catered to girls with it who called themselves the lost generation and considered it smart to be daring. Other high-flying young ladies of the 20s danced in the clouds above a world which momentarily had little to worry about. Helen Wills was the queen of sports. Her sizzling brand of tennis won seven singles championships at home and seven abroad. Daddy Browning and his 16-year-old bride Peaches had marital difficulties and gained fame as the darlings of the tabloids. Pretty vivacious Ruth Elder became the first woman to fly across the Atlantic. Her monoplane was aptly named the American Girl. Texas Guinan reigned over the nightclubs. She called her customers suckers and they loved it. During the turbulent 30s, bathing suits dwindled with the national income and hemlines tumbled down with the stock market. Like many another fad of the temporary 20s, exposed knees became just a memory. Princess Eugenie hats were pulled down over one eye. Big veils had a brief vogue. Some girls cut their hair short and some piled it up high. From Norway came a young and pretty figure skater named Sonja Henny to whirl away with the Olympic championship. There was a fabulous career ahead for the graceful Sonja. Mrs. Franklin Roosevelt, the first lady of the land, traveled everywhere and became an important part of the American scene. Amelia Earhart, the beloved Lady Lindy, flew the Atlantic alone. On a world-circling flight five years later, she disappeared forever. The fateful 40s brought World War II. Wax and waves marched off to serve with the men. Under fire on the shell-riddled Anzio beachhead, army nurses worked around the clock. Outfitted with fatigue clothes and helmets, they dug in with the rest. But through it all, they remained women. In war plants, on endless assembly lines, the ladies fought the battle of production. And like their mothers before them in World War I, they went to work on the railroads. The post-war period brought the bikini bathing suit and some other more conservative models, which announced to the world that curves were really back. After a half century of progress and service, the ladies were more feminine than ever, and their fashion showed it. Climbing to a position of equality with men, women had broadened their horizon so that now it ranged from high fashion to professional sports. Lady baseball leagues packed them in from coast to coast. Even the bone-jarring sport of football had to make way for the ladies. They took the game in their stride and played it well. When the girls went in for wrestling, mere man could be glad he was in his seat and not in the ring. With the roller derby, in which she was governed by the same rough and tumble rules as the men, the fantastic female became a million dollar sports attraction. of 1900 would look with amazement at their great-granddaughters of today, 
but leave it to the ladies to provide a sock ending for this half century's cavalcade of girls.